Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to set up and apply slab edges to your floors. Getting this right in the model will save you time and also increase the accuracy of your documentation. Now the model on the screen at the moment, it consists of uh, two profiles uh, set up as slab edge profiles. Um, we basically have a rectangle profile and a fillet profile. It can be used for edge beams and internal beams. Alright, so let's jump in and we'll make our profiles. Okay, you're going to start with new family. We're going to go to profile hosted. Okay, so we've got two reference planes already here. This is uh, basically the top of the slab and this is the outside of the slab. If that's where you're going to insert your profile or your slab edge, it doesn't have to be inserted at the top of the slab. Um, but in this most of the cases it will be. So what we're going to do is add two more reference planes. Um, shortcut for reference plane is, is RP. And we're going to add one at the bottom, one on the side. Then we're going to add angular align dimension. One here, one here. Okay, and give those dimensions parameters. So We'll do width for the top and height for the side. Okay, and we'll change these parameters to basically something that we're going to want later. 600. Okay, next thing I do is go to create and we want to create lines. Um, I use the uh, pick lines tool and lock the button so that when we place the lines on the reference planes they're locked. Now to join the lines together and trim them I use the trim command which is TR and that's just it's a nice little shortcut to know, very handy. So there you have it, that's our first profile, the rectangular profile. Um, we can also, if we want to, we can give this profile a profile usage. So if in our case, we're going to be using it as a slab edge. If um, you didn't want this to be particular to slab edges, you could just make it generic and then you could use this profile for just about anything. But in this case, let's make it a slab edge. Press OK. Um, then save it. When I save my slab edges, I always save them with the word slab edge in front, then rectangular, and because it's parametric, I give it the para in brackets after that. So I've already saved it, so I won't need to do that again. So another little tip for when you're saving your uh, anything that you're saving, any model that you do, is to Try and zoom right in, um, go to visibility graphics, which is VV or VG as the uh, shortcut. Open your annotation categories and switch off the markers there. And that way, when you go to a, your families later on, it, this is what it'll show and it'll be nice and clear what you've got. So before you save it, basically go up here to your family types button and uh, give yourself some family types, some different family types. This first one here it's a 600 by 400 so I'm going to give it a 600, oops, 600 high by 400 wide. Okay, we might make another couple, maybe 350, maybe 350. Don't forget to add your W and your H so you know what's what and then change it here. Okay, and apply, apply. So now we've got the two types here that will be loaded into our model. So the other profile that we're going to make is the fillet profile. So same again. Okay. All right. 
except this time I'm going to do something a little bit different and we are going to add another couple of reference planes one there and one there these reference planes we're going to dimension and we'll click on both of those because we want the fillet to be the same and we'll give it a parameter so width and in this case we'll just say 50 millimeters and we're going to add our lines to this lock pick lines one there one there I'm going to TR to um, trim those and I'm going to add create another line whoops another line just from that point to that point now those lines will stay at those points so when we increase our fillet width here say 200 they'll move together so we'll take them back to 50 and do the same thing as we did with the other we don't need to really add extra types to this one so we'll just make the one is 50 millimeter fillet. Okay, keep it at 50. That's all we need is the one. Apply. And what we'll do is we'll do visibility graphics. Turn off our annotation supply. Zoom in. And we'll go to save as family. And same as slab edge, fill it, para, already done it, so I'm not going to do it again. Now, load and close that into your project, and we'll move over there. Okay, so we're back in the main model now. We're going to apply uh, the new profiles to our slab, our new slab edges. Uh, so what we're going to do to start with is um, go to floor, slab edge, um, this slab edge is the one that comes out of the box. If we go into the edit mode, this is what you get out of the box uh, with a couple of options there. But um, what we're going to do is duplicate this one and give it uh, the name of ours, 600 by 400 wide. Change the profile. Two hours, 600 by 400. Change the category to concrete. Okay, so to apply this, we can either pick one at a time, like that, or we can hover over our slab, tab, and select all at once. So now if we go to the section, you can see that the concrete um, slab edge has gone all the way around. And if we go back to the floor plan, I will show you that by the wireframe mode. Now in 3D, we're going to apply our fillets. So I have already set it up. Um, so I've got the slab edge fillet, and if you have a look in profile here, have their fillet selected. So with this one, we can just go around and pick our internal line. So one here, one there, one there, one there. If we go to section, you can see that fillet has been applied. Now to uh, make the lines disappear between the two, we need to join the two together. Sorry. And that one and that one so therefore they've joined all the way around so now what we're going to do is change back to hidden line we're going to apply a, another slab edge this is going to be 200 mil down and 160 mil out from the existing slab so that uh, we can have a brick veneer wall sit on it um, so we go back to floor slab edge Here's one that we made up earlier, 400 high by 350 wide, using our same uh, rectangular profile. 
So if I click on that, you can see in here, we've got our 450 by 350. Click OK. Concrete material, apply, apply. What we want to do to apply this one is change our horizontal offset to minus 160 mil because that's how far the brickwork is going to be out from the slab and the brickwork is going to be 200 mil down from the slab so we're going to change our vertical profile offset to 200 mil down and all we need to do now is apply so we can either pick one at a time or tab again to get them all and then click to apply and you can see here is our, our extra edge beam if I go to the section view, you can see here we are, we're 160 mil out here and we're 200 mil down. So all we have to do now is join our two edge beams together, go to modify, join, and done. So quickly I will show you how to, if I place my wall on top of that, my brick veneer wall, how well it works. Architecture, wall, 250 mil brick veneer. I've set the brick to drop down 200 mil from the uh, interior framing. We're going to go with our core face exterior on top of the slab. As we place it around, and escape. We go to section view, you can see that the brick veneer is sitting down nicely on the edge beam at the bottom and the framing is sitting up on the slab, which is perfect. The benefit of this is that uh, anywhere you cut this model in any section, it's going to represent exactly what's going on. Uh, there's no detail lines, there's no field regions needed, it's just done straight away. Um, I'll quickly show you how to do a interior beam, interior concrete beam. So to begin with we're just going to hide all of our walls because we want to pick the top of the slab which is this edge here. So for this we need to go to floor, slab edge. I've made up another interior edge beam by duplicating and renaming. This one I am going to horizontally offset to begin with by 200 mil, so minus 200 mil, so it sticks outside this slab. So if I click on the slab, not the edge beam, you can see it there poking out. So if I hover over it and uh, select it, you can see it here. In this case, now that it's selected, I can move it by using the MV for move. Which I will do. Now if I uh, show the wireframe, you can see the slab edge beam or the interior beam right there. Same if we have a look in um, our 3D. It appears that I may have the wrong beam there. So let's just double check what I've got. Default, that's no good. So make sure you pick the right beams, 600 by 400. Okay, now we're back to normal. So if I go to my top, I can drag it into where I want it to go. And I can also join my beam to my fillets. And I can also, if I go in here to my 3D view, and then select floor, edge beam, fillet. I can add a fillet here and a fillet there. Then we go to section. As long as I join these, then in every view now, they're going to be represented well. Um, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like and uh, hit the little bell for notifications when I make new ones. Thank you.